Welcome to the DeFi Standard, and this is Mickey B. Fresh. And today's topic is going to be Codius, Flare, and RippleNet Cloud. What do they all have in common? And can they work together? Or are they different? And that's what we're going to discuss. So first, let's jump into the Flare CTO comment he made on Twitter about a year and a half ago. And he says, we think of Codius as an infrastructure provider option like AWS or Google Cloud Provider. So Codius is always an option to deploy a Flare node to. This is very important to understand that Codius itself is not a smart contract platform. It's an open hosting protocol. And Flare Network is the smart contract platform. So let's read here from the Codius website, which is loaded with information and it is far from dead. Let's just clear that up right now because it's open hosting protocol. It could also be used in proprietary ways, say with RippleNet Cloud. And we'll dig into that later in this video. So what is Codius? Codius is an open hosting protocol. It makes it very easy to upload a program, whether you want to run it on one host or thousands of hosts. It has built-in billing. This means that once a program is uploaded, anyone can pay to keep it running, the author, the users, even the program itself. And there's three different use cases that they lay out here on the Codius website. There's peer-to-peer -peer hosting, there's decentralized applications, and there's smart contracts. Now, what I want to touch on here is specifically the decentralized applications and the smart contracts. So here's the decentralized applications. Now, what is a decentralized application layer? If you want to create a secure distributed application that can interact with different distributed databases, we need an easy way to deploy that code. Codius is the application layer for the decentralized web. Programs running on Codius can interact with one another, as well as distributed databases such as XRP and Bitcoin and all other web services and APIs. So what this allows is a smart program to be able to hold assets from different blockchains and from different traditional ledgers, say fiat. So we have to think of Codius as the top layer of inner ledger. So now there's inner ledger. Flare Network utilizes inner ledger as well, and so does RippleNet. Now, Codius is that hosting infrastructure that will allow you to ho host that virtual, that Ethereum virtual machine on the Flare Network. So different infrastructures providers, say it's the agents or the signal providers can, or even any node on Flare Network can run Codius hosting protocol to house the smart contracts. And also we could see a wallet developed that will hold Bitcoin, XRP, uh, Doge, Litecoin, Spark, and all the Flare 20 tokens that will be coming out in the future. So let's go over here to smart contracts. So smart contracts run on Codius can hold assets in one or multiple math-based distributed ledgers, such as Bitcoin and XRP, collect information from any source connected to the internet, and be written in any standard programming languages. Depending on the security model required for the particular smart contract, the contracting parties can select the host or group of hosts they trust. Now with the Flare network, it already has a consensus built on top. So basically, Codius infrastructure can be utilized. So Codius, not a smart contract platform, but a hosting protocol that can be used in coordination with the Flare network and the nodes on the network. Now let's go over to this RippleNet Cloud PDF that was, I believe, just released yesterday or today. RippleNet Cloud is also SOC 2 certified, ensuring the highest standards in safety, security, and privacy. 
Now, this was just announced, I believe it was a day or two ago. So this PDF is brand new. Now, what is RippleNet Cloud? They haven't given us too much information, except it's hosted in the cloud. So now we're back to the hosted in the cloud. Ripple has recently received, uh, granted multiple patents that are based on Codeus and smart contracts and smart oracles. So who are the users of RippleNet Cloud? And they list, I believe it's 17 here, and there's a couple banks. So the banks that are listed are Banco Riedmento and GMT, which I believe is, uh, is an Israeli bank. And then you have all these payment providers, including Lulu Exchange was just named. We got Via Americas. Uh, we got MoneyGram in there, Transpago, uh, Money Match. So they have a decent amount of uh, RippleNet members signed up. And this, what they say here, is easy to connect to. So you don't need any extra hardware. And you could sign up two times faster. And it adds other services like on-demand liquidity after implementation. So this is a different type of service than the on-premises. So this is hosted in the cloud. Now, what protocol works hosted in the cloud? So, I mean, I could speculate here, and we could all speculate that it's possible that Ripple Net Cloud has something to do with Codeus. And since they were just granted the patents and it was just SOC 2 certified, I mean, it's something I think we need to keep an eye out. I don't think we could say for certain that RippleNet Cloud is using Codeus, but it looks like there's a good chance it could be in a proprietary way. So how they say Codeus is an open protocol, well, if you turn that into a proprietary RippleNet enterprise software, it very easily can be used. And it would be virtual machine agnostic. So whatever the hosts in RippleNet decide to use with each other, they would use that virtual machine. Maybe it's Ethereum. Maybe it's, um, you know, digital assets holdings. Maybe it's Quarta. It, it could be Hyperledger. I mean, it, it depends. It could hold any different smart contract virtual machine. But on Flare Network, Flare utilizes the Ethereum virtual machine for now. But they do talk about, in the future, using um, Agoric. And I want to touch on Agoric just for a second here, because Agoric is built on Cosmos, and they helped build the IBC protocol that is allowing all the different blockchains built on Cosmos to connect to each other. They are funded by Ripple as one of the main uh, investors. Also, Vanessa Patrizzi, who is the head of Spring Investments, is now one of the head marketing for Agoric. So she moved over there. And this isn't the only time that Flair has mentioned Agoric. I believe Hugo, the CEO of Flair, mentioned in an interview that they are very excited about what Agoric's doing. And now Agoric is building interoperable smart contracts using JavaScript that could go between different blockchains. And that's the next level of interoperability. So Interledger allows payments to move between ledgers. But then the next level of interoperability would be smart contracts that could interoperate with other smart contract languages. And JavaScript is the most utilized language for typical programming in the financial world. So Flare Network, just to recap here, Flare Network is the smart contract platform. It could utilize Codeist hosting infrastructure for the nodes, and it also could be for the agents and the signal providers. They're all going to be running nodes. And now these nodes are on Flare, and they're also on the XRP ledger. And that's the state transactor system. And they're also on Doge, and they're also on Litecoin. So any of the F assets, the nodes need to be running on both networks. So this is the evolution kind of of what the codiest vision was. Even though it's an open hosting protocol, the vision of what Codius was capable of doing is being shown now in what Flare has built. And I think it's really, really amazing that they've been able to take that vision and build a dedicated smart contract platform to it that allows to bring over value from other networks. Now, if we could see a wallet that's going to allow us 
to hold all these assets, say it's XRP, Doge, Litecoin, Flare, Flare 20s, all those tokens in one wallet should be possible using smart programs with Codeus hosting protocols. And that's something to look out for in the future. I'm Mickey B. Fresh, and I'm out.